I'm Sujit Sivasundram. I lecture here at the Faculty of History in the University of Cambridge, and with me uh, is Simon Schaffer, who's Professor of the History of Science in the Department of History and Philosophy of Science here at the University of Cambridge. Uh, and we are convening together a workshop here at CRASH with the title Exploring Traditions, Sources for a Global History of Science, which is funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council, uh, and we're delighted to have it here at CRASH. So Simon, why are you excited about this workshop? Well, I think the main reason why I'm excited is because um, it provides uh, an unusual opportunity, I think, to debate some really fundamental issues about the way we tell stories about the sciences and the contemporary relevance and importance of those stories. For a very long time, it seems to me, um, the apparently self-evident fact that the sciences are globally distributed um, and, as it was said, invented in Europe, uh, was taken rather oddly, you might think, as evidence that there's no historical geography or political geography to the sciences at all, because they go everywhere and work everywhere. And what that meant was that the task of the historian of anything like globalised sciences was to tell what we might think of as a diffusionist story, in which the question was, um, how did the sciences spread and how were they accepted? And I think over the past generation or two, the historiography has moved on in difficult but also exciting ways. Um, I think there are some major problems. We have to discuss those problems. And uh, our project has allowed us to invite two very, very distinguished practitioners in the field, um, Keith Breckenridge from South Africa and Irfan S. Habib from India, who I think offer precisely in their work a really important and provocative way of moving on, not just from diffusionism, but from some of its dangers as well. Great, and it's wonderful uh, to have not only um, these two scholars giving papers uh, at this workshop, but also a whole series of graduate students mm -hmm. uh, and people entering the discipline mm -hmm. through the route both of the Faculty of History yeah. here in Cambridge and the Department uh, of the History and Philosophy of Science. But I guess one of the kind of challenges that emerges in talking uh, about global histories of science is this issue of sources, yeah. isn't it, on the one hand, and languages too, actually, um, because uh, if we are to decenter from Europe, uh, we need to use radically new kinds of sources. So if one looks at the conference poster uh, connected to this workshop, uh, we have the sailing chart uh, from the Marshall Islands. Uh, we can think of, and this is something I've worked on, palm leaf manuscripts um, from South Asia, a whole range of sources like this, which are not intuitively where historians of science go, yeah. right? Because they're not necessarily places of hard experiment uh, or data collection. They're tied quite literally to context of narration, mm -hmm. to pick up your point about mm -hmm. storytelling. And so uh, it really requires a great deal of creativity and collaboration as well uh, to make these sources count uh, in the history of science. Uh, so that's one challenge, I think, um, that lies ahead. Um, for yeah, this I workshop. think one of the things that goes along with that, and it's perhaps a very familiar point in the history of globalised sciences, is that uh, lots of past practitioners we're asking questions which are strangely and perhaps predictably similar to the ones that are moving us right now for the workshop. So Creole elites in Latin America, which will be discussed in the workshop, um, practitioners in the Indian subcontinent or in 19th century Africa were themselves asking questions about the geographical scope of the sciences, their implantation in, in particular locales, precisely the best model to use to think the past and the future of the sciences. And I think that's one of the most exciting and important aspects of the workshop, which is that both Keith Breckenridge and Irfan Habib, and indeed a lot of the graduate student papers as well, show us the ways in which these questions enrich our understanding of the past of the sciences and they have enormous actuality that they they have enormous contemporary relevance. but at the same time as these creole intellectuals and so on were discussing the local significance of knowledge there was a sort of bigger narrative which is a political narrative yeah. about the global history of science as well which has been circulating for quite some while mm -hmm. i mean we're returning to the global history of science now i guess but other people did at various points in the past mm -hmm. for particular political reasons right so one could talk about um, the only modern natural philosophers who are into their kind of global maps of diffusion uh, in turn of people, of languages, of 
quite literally, of uh, plotting temperature and things like this, um, one could think of the nationalists uh, of India or in the Middle East who said our science is better and is longer and much, much longer standing and European science actually comes from our science. Uh, one could think of empire itself as a project which is about the accumulation of knowledge and which is justified through uh, the universal pretensions of science. So I guess there's a danger here. We don't want to kind of fall back into the nationalist mold or the imperialist mold or uh, the early modern natural philosophical mold. Uh, we need some distance from that. And I think that's... Um, so it's fine to go to the kind of Creole intellectuals or the local context, but we must make sure that we don't just sort of create uh, this big pattern, uh, which is not rooted anywhere, I guess. Mm -hmm. So Would you agree? <laughs> I absolutely agree. Um, and I also think that a way forward, clearly not the only way forward, but a way forward is to try and think of different ways of pursuing this conversation. This is the first of a series of workshops and meetings that the AHRC project allows us to stage. So this is a conversation that will continue well into next year and beyond. So please come and join the conversation.